We're back again with the 6, 7, 12 valve and I have some bad news unfortunately. I had put this outside for winter storage and some water had gotten past the saran wrap that I had right in it and it had rusted it out. So on the uh, whole cylinder head, the bore, the deck, uh, I had to take care of the rust. So I used some muriatic acid, which basically, if you imagine this was all rusty, the muriatic acid stripped it back down to that nice finish again. Um, so it'll run, it probably won't run as often as it could, but I have faith in it. Uh, the next thing that happened is the gear case is too tight. So if you can kind of see, uh, it's a little tighter on one side of the gear here. Actually, ugh, when I go to put this on, it's a little tighter here and it's a little looser here. So uh, it'll run and I can bar it over like this and I can tighten it down. My worry is that from having this pump gear push on the cam gear, um, the cam gear front bearing will get burnt out from the pressure. I'm not worried about the pump because they have a massive bearing in the front here, but I think over time that'll cause an issue. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pull the gear case off, remove my dowels, and then just shimmy it over a little bit. I'm gonna have the pump gear bolted up when I'm doing this, and that'll kind of help me set my backlash on the gear. Um, my goal with this video is to have that done have it all together in my truck and maybe break it in and get it running, but it's not gonna have all the cool stuff added onto it. I'm not gonna have the turbo setup done. Um, I still have to build a pump support bracket for the back of the injection pump, but it'll still run kind of how it is. Uh, just like to get it together in the truck, maybe running, and then I know it's safe for the next little bit before I can get to it. So um, thanks for tuning in and let's dig into it. Got the engine upside down on my uh, totally safe engine stand and the cam is slid out. Um, I guess this is an easier way of showing earlier uh, just how tight things were. Now that the gear is on, it spins freely and I can pop it off. Before it was so tight that like I had trouble pulling it off. Um, so I'm just gonna put the nut on this now and uh, loosen off the gear case and then slide the cam back in and just kind of see if I can still kind of freely pop this on and off. Nice. Next up on the engine is the injection pump timing. Uh, there's a bunch of different methods of doing this. Some use a dial indicator in the injection pump. Some use air uh, for spill port timing. Um, I use a balancer and a hunk of welding rod. It sounds greasy. It's worked great. It's not the most accurate, but this whole mechanical engine isn't very accurate as well. And there's so many factors to calculate when setting timing that like say you set your engine for 20 degrees it may not actually be the same 20 degrees depending on say injector uh, washer thickness head gasket thickness piston bowl shape uh, injector pop off it's it's a crapshoot to really have it as optimal as you'd like so you just kind of got to set it Try it out. If it sounds a little too rattly or if it's uh, low on low end power, you pull a couple of degrees out. If it's uh, pulling good but up top end, it kind of falls off, you add a couple more degrees as well. Uh, generally, a stock 12 valve, um, completely stocked, like say 18 degrees to 20 degrees, and then kind of more hopped off ones sit at about 24 to 28. So in this truck uh, engine application, I'm going to 30 degrees. Um, or at least around 30 degrees uh, based on calculations and everything like that, but uh, I'm gonna try it out from there. Anyways, onto the method. So the uh, what I do is I measure the circumference of the balancer. So the diameter is eight and a quarter, and then I find the circumference of it, which is 25.918 around it. Um, and then I divide that by 360, and then that gives me how many thousands of an inch it takes per degree to advance the timing or or retard it or to move it so then um uh, let's uh, in this application i need to advance it by 30 degrees so i multiply 0 0.072 by 30 and that gives me 2.158 i believe so then i take my caliper and i measure out a 2.158 and when I bar the engine counterclockwise, which advances it, I want to have this indicator line up with here. And then after that's set, I will tighten the nut and the gears on and it is good to go, should run. Uh, some other things to note, uh, if you have a stock engine, your 
stock timing, say 94, 95 with a 160 and 175 pump will be 12.5 degrees and a uh, 96, 98 with a 180 and 215 pump is 14 and a half degrees. Um, I believe uh, 14 and a half degrees, I'm for sure. The earlier pumps, I think it might be 11 and a half or 12 and a half. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Uh, anyways, you'll want to make sure it is uh, set uh, pinned in the injection pump here. Uh, if you remove this, there will be a tab that you uh, line up with the hole in the center there, and that will let you know that the pump is pinned. So this pump being a CPP 13 mil is pin time to zero degrees. But if this was, say, a 215 pump and it's 14 and a half degrees, then I want to add 15.5 degrees to get 30 degrees with that 215 pump on top of what the pump timing is. So then I'd, of course, add that. Uh, I'd do 0 0.072, multiply that by 15 and a half, and that gets me 30 degrees with that pump. Um, while doing this whole process, you also want to make sure your engine's at top dead center. Um, kind of out of out of order here, but uh, yeah, top the pin time pump, top dead center on the engine. Uh, you can find top dead center if you have the engine all apart here by lining up two of the marks. So there's a uh, a here you can see like a little zero like that, but except that zero is on the crank, and then on the other side here you have a zero and a zero on the two teeth, and you line them up. Um, and then that's top dead center. Uh, you can also put a wire down the injector hole and then bar the engine over and then find when the wire's at the top. Um, you can also uh, use the pin on the back here to pin the gear. Um, and uh, yeah, a couple different methods there. Uh, another thing I'll be doing is I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark this dead straight right here before i set any timing i know that's at top dead center because it's use it's a pain in the ass using the um cam gear pin uh especially if you're out a whole whack load and or if it's broken or you're always scared of breaking it um i like to at least make a line there that i know approximately okay around that area it should be at top dead center and then you can verify using any of the other methods i just described to find uh top dead center for sure uh, anyways, I've got it set. I'm going to bar it back, tighten that down, and we should be good to move on to putting the front cover on. Just put a new front main seal on this cover here. A couple little things about that. Um, generally, if you see any sort of wear on the crank snout, it's good to get a wear sleeve. Um, Rock Auto is my preferred place to get them, as everyone else kind of wants uh, quite a bit of money. But if you're already here, you already installed a seal, or you got your seal and you're like, damn, I don't want to wait for a new wear sleeve. You can set your seal depth in here. Um, so like, say normally you install this a little bit lower. You can set it so it's kind of near the edge here or a little bit deeper. And that'll have the seal right on a different part of the crank snout here. So it's not kind of going into where it's already ground down. Um, another little side note. Um, there's two types of these timing covers. There's ones with the reinforcement and there's ones without. So this is one of the more reinforced ones. Um, maybe a little bit quieter, maybe seals a little bit better, but uh, just something to kind of look for if you're uh, Frankensteining something together. Okay, so this next part's a little bit out of nowhere. I lost the original first clip that kind of introduced it, but uh, I'm priming the oil system in the engine and normally you can't do this um, because the oil pump's gear driven. So I made a modified oil pump uh, for priming the system. You can't, not without some sort of special tool because the oil pump is gear driven off the crank. Well, I devised this little device using a spare oil pump I had um, and where I just welded a nut to the oil pump drive. And then that way with my helpful friend here, Big Hooch. Nope, oh, no oh, battery's dead. Hold on, <laughs> there we go. Oh, stupid battery pack. That turn over. You can see some oil pissing out, which is really nice for a fresh build with no oil pressure. And it's like the first 10 seconds, it has to suck it up the pickup tube on the engine before it even gets to the uh, engine. As well as it's really helpful for finding out where you have oil leaks on a brand new engine before you put it in. Makes it easier to fix. <laughs> That's not going to be a fun one there. Especially on this side, say you're missing a, you know, if you forget 
the oil pressure sensor uh, like I've totally not done twice on other engines <laughs> when I fired them up and totally coat your uh, engine bay uh, yeah uh, nice to nice to make sure you remember that um, so as I'm doing this and turning it over I'll let it for a little bit and the uh, impact actually kind of loads up when it starts to build oil pressure then I'll bar it over a little bit turn it over kind of let it get to some different different oil passages in the rods and engine and uh, just kind of keep doing that I could probably put a oil pressure gauge on as well as I'm doing this to really verify what it's putting out but uh, yeah, thought I'd just make a quick video to share, just this little idea. Something that isn't necessarily a part of the 6, 7, 12 valve build, but something I have to deal with is I've got some broken studs in this cylinder head to extract. There's uh, three, so uh, my preferred method for stud extraction is the uh, TIG welder. So I'll start by, say it's this one here, I'll take my uh, TIG rod and I'll just kind of make a little bit of a a nipple coming out of it and then I'll take a washer put the washer over top weld it to, uh, weld the nipple to the washer and then weld a nut on top of that and then uh, get it nice and going hot and I've had pretty good luck with it I'll do another one here and I'll record that here are the spoils of war uh, three extracted studs so my original idea when I started this video was to just throw this together and throw it in the truck and call her good, but it's almost against my nature to not paint an engine. So I've got it mashed up here. Pretty much everything that's important is mashed up. The pump was already painted, so I have that covered. Um, I might actually remove the intake horn here and then just tape off the top of it so I can kind of get a better coating underneath it, as I won't be using that intake horn anyways. Uh, just yeah just quick cheap uh paint job here i'll be starting with some 2k high build primer and that'll kind of give everything a nice smooth finish and uh give the paint i'll be using a nice uh surface to grab to and uh, then after i shoot the 2k high build i'll have the paint and then after the paint i'll have a clear coat and it should look nice so i'm going to get started on painting it soon here So the 2K high build is on. You can see everything has a nice consistent texture on it. No kind of, uh, you know, old paint flakes or nothing like that. It's all nice and smooth. And then uh, for color, I've got this VHD engine metallic. It's a nice burnt copper. I've seen this on a couple engines and I've been curious to kind of use it myself. Now, unfortunately, the uh, Canadian Tire local to me only had one can, so I hope I can get this whole engine done with one can. Unfortunately, otherwise I'll have to come back tomorrow when I finish this off. So here we are. Uh, everything's painted. Have not shot clear coat though. Uh, clear is really what makes the paint pop. Um, you kind of see it's kind of dull, like still really shiny, very bright. Uh, I'll say that with the engine paint, the coverage really sucks on it. Like. I had to coat over multiple spots uh, or spots multiple times in order to just kind of get a full effect of coverage. Otherwise, you can kind of see uh, it gets dim in kind of some areas. I, I've been over this so much it's kind of hard to find. <sighs> hard to show. I guess like in here, yeah. Like whereas a different color will kind of really coat it uh, as well if you don't get it very well with the orange. It, uh, just so you can see a lot of like dull from primer, but I've been over it pretty good. I guess a better example would be over in this side where you don't see, like it looks good and then you kind of see like just little dull areas. But anyways, um, on to shooting some clear and then it'll really pop and I gotta let it sit and uh, then it's ready to 
put it, put it all together and into the truck. Got the clear coat loaded in the gun here. I'm gonna shoot this orange with some clear and uh, we'll see how it looks. Well, that's it for the video. Um, apologies, it's not really the greatest end to it. Uh, I hadn't taken a lot of clips. Uh, maybe I was kind of half-baked on the paint fumes. At the other time, I was also just really trying to get the thing together. I'm kind of, I was half mad that I even let it get rusty in the first place. And I'm like, I'm putting all this work into an engine that I'm not even sure it's gonna be okay. Um, and just in a busy time of year for me as well. So I apologize for that. The next video will be a lot more in-depth. We'll be covering some of the uh, little intricacies such as the pump bracket and a couple other things, um, as well as some important thing with the head gasket that I had to find out as well. Um, and what else is there gonna be in the video? The first fire as well too. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already and uh, stay tuned. Uh, appreciate the support and uh, hope to see you then. Thank you very much. I'll uh, see you later.